Hey guys, welcome back. This is Code Order Rules, and here we are for part two of the two part series for 15L Heads Up Recording Live. As you can see, we just set, uh, we got a new opponent here, and uh, he sat down with 60 big blinds. We don't have any reads on him, we don't know how, idea how he's going to play. So, with that, let me make sure that I'm not sitting at any other tables, and I was. So, let me go ahead and sit out. And we're going to be raising every button here at the very first few hands. And when you're playing against a lot of opponents, a lot of new opponents, it does seem like I am raising a lot of buttons. Most of the time I am much more controlled and I don't raise you know, as many buttons or so. Um, we can value bet this 10 again. I feel like he calls me on the flop with like a 7. A lot of ace highs. Uh, if he shoves me on the turn here, I guess it's very possible for him to have a two. And I see with that flop, not necessarily the greatest board to see because I don't think he ever folds ace high a whole lot. But I do it just because I want to see if he is going to be folding like ace high or any kind of garbage or anything. And we've got a, any kind of like marginal strength hand, like queen eight, you know, to a min raise we can call out of position. We only have to win one and three, lift that because of, of the. Uh, Hand, the money that we make post flop when we hit, so and we flop a pair like one and three two. And I guess someone who's who raises a lot of buttons, I don't really, I'm not really too worried about uh, you know being dominated or anything. Again, another really dry board. Um, I'm going to be c betting this. Again, this is seeing how he, he he's going to react. So now he's one for two and. Calling uh, C-bets, folding the C-bets. Oh, he makes it 3x to go, which maybe he's got some kind of a system there. I don't normally like, tend to mix up my ray sizing too early. So far, he hasn't folded a hand preflop, and as I say that, he folds a hand. How many times will I wait till I, you know, raise every button? I have no idea. Um, it's still I feel like I get like a decent number of sample hands from him, like. Is he is he folding every C bet or if not? And then I, once they get like a feel, like we go to showdown, what kind of a strength of a hand is he playing from the big blind? Um, then I guess I will stop raising every every button. We're gonna go for two good straights of value here. Um, check min raise. This could be anything from like Ace X to like King Ten to Queen Jack. Get a feeling though. What is this? I actually got a feeling this is like a two pair kind of hand. Um, we really don't have any idea what kind of a player he is. This board is extremely draw heavy. He's playing a lot of hands though. His overshove here could be anything. I think it's like King Ten. To be honest, maybe like Ace Nine. It could be. I don't think it's Queen Jack. It could be like a King Queen with the Queen King Queen of Spades. I think I'm gonna top myself into a call here. I have no. I don't know what the hell he's doing this with. Ace Nine. So I was ahead. I mean, I was ahead on the flop. Um, I was right that he did have two pair. Almost, almost folded, but I couldn't really consider myself folding. I can make a note on that. It's actually a really bad flop check raise. And then uh, over shoves, turn 2x with. Alright. So that was a good way to start off uh, part two of the video. I mean, here's the way that I look at it on that board. Right? We had um, top pair a gut shot. Right? So that's minimum um, seven outs. You know, if if our opponent has two pair, you know, on the turn we also had like any king or ten gives us give us a higher two pair than him, as well as any jack, any queen. So any card like ten or higher, other than an ace, you know, is beneficial to us. Well, we finally get our first opponent here in two video in two videos to buy in full against us, as then he leaves. So I re I retract that statement. But uh, 
I think now is a good time for us to pause it and let's wait for another opponent. And we've got ourselves another opponent here. He sat down with 40 big blinds. And that's pretty much all I know. And he folds the first hand. That, that's generally a sign of not a rag. Um, whenever somebody folds the first hand. He folds the second hand. So hes I don't think he's too much of a station. So now we're determining like how big of a knit is he going to be. Maybe he won't turn out to be either. Who knows? But, you know, again, since we're applying somebody new for the first time, we're going to be raising any two cards here on the button. Or the first, at least, probably five or ten buttons. Um, and unless we get a feel that he's calling 100% of the time in the big blind, then uh, we won't. And then we find out if he's actually, if he folds a lot of, but a lot of big blinds, then we will just raise, continue to raise any two cards um, in the button. And here's a, a mighty min re-raise, and we've got a really good hand to uh, just call getting four to one on a price. If we flop an ace, we're going to be careful with it. We probably won't double him up, but that's pretty much all we're going to be doing. And we're going to take him down. Against people that like the min re-raise a lot, which is kind of common. Um, which is something that I bring up on the podcast with uh, AA Poker and myself. Um, it's not really good to be folding that pre-flop a lot, getting such a good price. And we're getting a better price there than we were, like, calling a min raise. Um... I don't think he's going to be folding ace high, so it's not good for us to bet it. Uh, and actually, we split it, so... Keep that in mind. He didn't see bet when he had a complete air. Keep that in mind. When he probably could have see bet it. That's not his note. Uh, no, he donks this one. Uh, we don't, we're, it's not very good to fold a pair uh, heads up on the flop, and then he overshoves this. I don't feel too comfortable calling this with the two just yet. He has some two aggro, so he could very easily have a king here. Uh, or turning other hand into a bluff, so I'm just going to fold it. This guy's playing really, very, very weird right now. I've got a feeling that when the chips go in, I'm going to be the one wanting to bet them in. And not the other way around. Do you want to see what he limped in with on the button? I think I do. For one bet, uh, he limped in with the queen ten suit in. So that is a very good sign. That means he's not raising that hand preflop. Um, that's a very standard hand to raise preflop. Um, I know it might seem like it was a weak you know, a really bad call down with queen high, and you know what, it might have been, uh, the only, the only thing is like, it was costing me one big blind, and I got a lot of information there in a situation. And here we go, we see that he's playing like queen two out of the, out of the blinds, so this guy is a very weak opponent. And he min re-raises us again. And that's He can min re-raise me all day long. Well, we got a gut shot and a flush draw. And a king. Um, there's our king. Let's go ahead and value bet this boy. I get three. I don't know what. No, if he shoves me here, I have no idea what the hell he can possibly have. This is such an interesting, crappy spot. Really big check raise. Like, extremely big. Min re raises, checks the flop, and then check raises the turn. And trying to induce me into calling. It's not that I'm scared, I just have like no idea what the fuck this guy's got. You know, what kind of equity do I have? I've got like the seven's probably good. Unless he flopped the nut flush, which. Is actually a good possibility. Is he flopped the nut flush? Uh, I'm gonna fold it. I have no idea what the hell he's got. He's never raising preflops, so like, 
when he does min re rays, what the hell can he possibly have? And he doesn't really like to buff bluff post flop. I mean, uh, like when we check to when we check down like this, he's not trying to steal every pot. Except for like on the river, it was when he bets it. I just folded the three. It's no big deal. Interesting spot, for sure. I mean, I don't tend to like bet fold that turn, but like, it doesn't make any sense what kind of a hand. Because I'm representing the king, so I don't know why like he's wanting me to. I don't know. It was a big check raise too. Very confusing. See now, if he min raise, re raises me here with the ace queen, I will just four bet it in. It's no big deal. Uh, seven four offsuit's kind of weak. If it were suited, I would most certainly call. I haven't had the opportunity to see it yet, but let's go ahead and see how he feels about his little uh, min bets here. Not a very big re-raise at all. Very small, like five, one to five. Um, as obviously that his donk bets are pretty weak. I mean, let's just keep him betting down here. I don't think he's got anything of any any value at all. I do have the seven redraw to go with the uh, plus draw. What did he have there? He had King Jack. So he's raising King Jack preflop, and he min bets complete air. And, well, I have no problem calling min bets down, to be honest. With an ace high. I mean, it's cost, it's gonna, if it's cost me another 50 cents to see showdown here, to see what kind of a hand he's min re raising with preflop, I will most certainly do that. So min re raising a seven. And that is all the information I need. He seems to think this is a limit a limit game, I guess. I think he's got a king, to be honest. Um, when he min raises me on the flop like that. If he bets weak again though on the river, I will have to call. What the hell is this guy doing? This guy is just playing like a retard completely. With the middle pair top kicker on. So, yeah, he's turning like made hands into bluffs. I don't think he has any idea at all about like hand strength. I don't know. This guy is totally uh, off the wall. Totally and ridiculously off the wall. I got turn this a little value bet here. And that's a bad river card. I probably will just check fold the river here, unless he bets it really weak. Yeah. I mean Essentially you would think that he you know, after call he calls the flop and he bets basically on the river, he could very easily have like a complete bluff. Um but he's been doing really stupid things with a lot of like marginal hands. So like, if he's like turning like second pair into a bluff, he could very be easily be turning like uh, like a four into a bluff there by like overbetting the the river or something. I've got no idea. That's a good card for us. This is the first C bet I've had to make, like all day. I don't think it matters if I bet two to fifty in this board. And 
Um, he's not raising queen ten. He's raising king and jack, so I guess I'll call it king ten. Against a lot of guys, I will uh, re-raise the king ten preflop. Against guys who like to raise a lot, this guy's just like min down ace high, and I have like no problem with that because he's giving me like complete odds to draw to like everything of my brother. I might call this river, but oh, well, not anymore. Not the overshuff. Like, what the hell is this guy doing? I don't even know if he knows what he's doing. Like, seriously, I have no idea. This guy is acting like a complete goofball. It's hard to like quantify at all. Like, what the hell this guy is doing at any point, at any time. Still figuring out how am I gonna play this guy with like a pair like in this, in this situation. He like he's betted out two of four before this. Um, a lot of times I will bet out that flop for value. Um, he had a flush draw, so he didn't even bet the flush draw. So. I don't know. I, I've got a feeling that he doesn't really like the bluff all too much. Um, so if that's the case, then I'm going to uh, just be careful when he does bet. Here, he bets pot nearly. I'm going to be calling with bottom pair. Maybe I'll spike two pair on him on the turn here and get his stack. And then he bets weak. It's almost like he thinks the king is a scare card for whatever hand that he has. I'll go ahead and give him to him right now. Don't really want to double him up or give him, get it, make him win a big pot. Uh, right now we're just like losing money to the rake or anything to him, but he's playing extremely goofy. I haven't quite figured him out yet. He is folding to a lot of c-butts. And that's something that I can do. And he is donk betting quite often. Um, I raise him there the same way because I think I raise him on this board a lot as a bluff. Um, and now I'm just going to go ahead and calm him down. I don't think he has the flush, unless he had like the ace of spades with another card, which doesn't really make too much sense. Although I think he does have the flush here. He, or he could have a hand like ace four or jack seven, but I really can't fold. Um, I do think I'm behind though. Uh, like, this guy is just playing so like off the wall batshit crazy. But one thing that's one reason why I'm making the call is because he's very aggro on every street. Yeah, he turned like bottom pair into a bluff for whatever reason. So, this guy's like completely nuts. Like, absolutely nuts. I learned my lesson the last time I had second pair there on that board and didn't, uh, didn't bet it out, so I did the same thing for that one. Um, now that we're under like 20 big, 30 big blinds here, I'll be min raising, as I mentioned in my part one of the video. It looks like he's back to min re raising again, and then he overshoves. This is actually a complete bluff. Um, the only problem is, though, there's a good chance he's got a better ace high kicker than me, which is why I won't call. If I had like ace in here, I would have gotten it in pre flop. Um, but if I had any pair here, I would call. Any pair, uh, even a pair of twos. Ace two with a pair of twos, I would have called. Ace two though is a bit, is a bit different, only because like he's gonna turn like ace eight into a bluff or over shove that ace eight there. Um, so that's why I don't uh, do that. And let's min bet this at river out for some reason. And then he over shoves like he hasn't bet the flush draw before, so it's very good possible he has a flush draw.
This guy's so awesome, though. You guys that have been re-raised every hand are great. I'm just gonna get this in on this board. I'm not really even gonna play around with it in a re-raised pot like that. The draw a board. He's calling me with like a lot of hands that have a lot of equity against me, like a flush, like a ten high flush draw here. So that's fine. Like he had two overcards and a flush draw, so like I had no problem. Um, just shoving it in, even though he's got a lot of equity. And I'm going to be uh, getting this in too. Yeah, no. Tap pair and not flush redraw. I'm getting it in. Doubtful he doesn't have the flush, although I don't mind him uh, calling or folding. I don't think, I think I'm way ahead. Oh, yeah. Oh, we split it. Oh, bogus. On that pair to four. Totally forgot about that. It's so lame. I had like so many outs. Like, he had so few outs. He was drawing to like a non club five and like uh, a board pairing. But what are you gonna do? On that like ace ten with ten of spades, I think he was probably ahead on the flop, um, to be honest. But there's really not much like. Uh, I really can't fold and like, or I can't really call either because the pot's gonna be too big. So I just get it in and get my equity, or or I know where my equity's at. I wish I would have had a spade, yes, but even still, it's not necessary. Um. Well, last time he called it, right? So let's just go ahead and uh, make this like. Can we make it 9.50? I mean, we have the second nuts, right? We only lose to 5.6. What the hell is this down? Alright, yeah, no. There's our hand. So, you know, even though we did lose that ace queen, or we tied that ace queen with ace five, and um, we lost that coin flip against this guy. We did eventually get our second when we had the best hand. This guy was freaking weird. I'm not going to deny that. This guy played completely off the wall, badget crazy. I mean, it wasn't even like predictable. It was completely unpredictable of a way to play. I mean, turning like second pair into big bluff like that, third pair to big bluff like that is, is really interesting. I mean, when you see somebody turning main hands into bluffs, it's probably like the hardest way to play. Hardest person to play against is somebody who turns main hands into bluffs because like, then you really don't. It's really hard to make like good marginal ace high call downs when it's like he could have ace high or he could have like bottom pair here, even though he's because he's a retard. But okay, that was a big opponent there to start off the video. Uh, let's go ahead and put you guys on pause again. And wait for the next guy to come. And just like that, we have a new guy, and that wasn't that long at all. Open limps first hand is always a good sign. And let's go ahead and min bet this out here. He's going to be calling with like a lot of flushes. Um, a lot of flush draws, really. And we're going to go ahead and check call the river. He's only going to be betting the river with like the, a flush and a 9. Um, so I have a good opportunity against that range. Or a 5. Interesting. Um, that's actually a, a rather thin little value bet there. Although, I mean, it is second pair. Very interesting. His uh, flop call was standard. Turn call was okay. I mean, he did have a, a lot of uh, he did have a lot of outs, more than I more than uh, you think he does. You know, with, he did have fluster outs too. Uh, we have a suit connector here out of position. I will call. See a lot of flops at this. We're gonna be check calling a lot of like mid uh, bottom pair, mid pair kind of flops and. Maybe even going to showdown with them. Uh, they're okay to re-raise as a bluff too, but I don't like to re-raise as a bluff just early yet. We don't really know how he's going to reacting. If he's re-raising, if he's raising a lot of big blinds, or if he's just playing, you know, his cards or whatever. Uh, it's the first time he's three bet us. We really haven't had somebody who's um, that solid in aggro yet. We will re-raise King Jack though for value um, against this guy.
He must have known we were going to re-raise. He could see it in our in our hands shaking on the table. That was the first hand he folded to. Uh, good board to see about here as a bluff. You know, ace high. Ace XX, excellent board to see about bluff. Um, not a very good barreling card, because it makes like a 6 and a 5 more likely to call. Even though it gives him less likely to opportunity to have an ace. Um, we're not really representing much on this river if we were trying to bluff it out, to be honest. That's why I won't bluff this here just early. I want to see what he's check calling me with on the flop, too. So that's, uh, he probably would have folded to river bet, but we get the beneficial information of having him having like 5-4 offsuit there. We have a pair of sixes with the um, open end straight draw. We're going to check call two streets and probably bet fold this river. If he raises us here, it's probably almost always a flush. So, not too worried about having to fold this after only $3 in the pot. His raise size is rather ridiculous. You know, if he made it even like $6, I'd have a hard time folding it, but I probably would still fold it if he made it 6 So. What's that race size too? He made that like 14, right? 3 to 14. So it's guy is very. It seems like he's gonna be very aggressive, and that is fine. And then he leaves after taking 10 bucks off me, which is okay, I guess. Um, too bad we didn't get to play against him more. I would have liked to have uh, worked my way through and eventually stacked him, but oh well, it didn't work out. But uh, we'll be back. And we're back. It didn't take that long at all. <laughs> Seconds after he left, this new opponent sits down. Um, I don't think we've really been set with any regs yet, although we've only got like half an hour left in the video. It's very potential that we could have somebody sit down with us. This guy seems to be fairly tight, not necessarily on the loose aggressive side, but on the uh, I'm a tight guy as he folds three hands in a row. We're getting some really good hands too, like King Ten, King Queen. And King Queen suit is like a s extremely strong hand heads up. Plays very well. And then he finally raises once. So he folds four hands in a row. Now he's raised a couple buttons. Um, one good sign to see if your opponent's like a reg if he only ra if he only like plays a hand in position on you, um, and he folds all the hands out of position. So if he like if he raises every button and like folds every big blind, then it's probably common that he's gonna be kind of a reg. Uh, we'll see how he plays in three bet pots, and you know we continue to play him or we can continue to you know look for somebody better to play. Uh, la, 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 la. Let's go ahead and see how he reacts. This is a similar situation we had earlier in the previous video where we have like a decent pair of like, uh, let's go, I'm going to get two streets here. We're going to go for four bucks on this turn. Try and get queen, keep queen jack and a flush draw in the pot. Oh, there's our three barrel, three, uh, three bet. I'm sorry. I'll make this 11.50. We check behind that river when we don't hit two pair or trips. Um, like betting that turn and betting that flop and turn is kind of interesting. It depends on how much of a station he is. Like, I think we can still bet the flop for value because he's in, he should check all also like ace high a lot um, and all of his draws. Betting the turn is kind of marginal as long as there's like more draws out there though. I'm gonna keep um, keep betting it more. Really don't know how he's gonna react. He check min raises us here. He's probably got like a top pair or something. Um, I'm even trying getting this in. Make this uh, ten. The only hand I'm really worried about really is king ten. Um, he's gonna have all kind of other kind of junk in his hands. Uh, la, la. I think he's gonna have to get in king queen um, here. He's gonna have king jack a lot too. Uh, he probably just got there. 
and so we're going to check behind. No, we didn't. So that was... Check min rays, flush draw, and calls turn without odds. I mean, the turn got really scary with a, with a jack because I think King Jack is a big part of his range. Um, this guy's pretty bad, so we're gonna re-raise this hand for value. Nine, yeah, nine X. Good board to see, but when we don't have a hand, uh, we're gonna make this exactly like. Oh fuck! That was a misclick. Hopefully, he doesn't have an ace. He does. Sorry, I meant to make it six dollars, not sixty. I mean, that's that's a misclick from when I'm used to making it. Not I'm not used to these bet sizes, and so it really killed my hand there. That was a horrible bet. I mean, we get we got noted that he calls a re-raise with, um, and we're gonna bet one more time here. Calls re-raise with Ace Five O. I mean, it, it did cost us forty bucks, or like thirty bucks more than I wanted it to. That sucks. It would normally put me on tilt if it was a hundred big blinds. That's something that would put me on tilt. And he overbets this river. This is a complete bluff, a lot, um, or the complete looks like nine ten or something. So I would probably call there with like any pair. But if he's calling the re-raise with like uh, Ace Five, um, I get somebody. You know, I'm not really three betting him all that much. Now, but now he sees me three betting him with Queen Jack. Uh, it's gonna change things. It, this board is actually the worst board to see bet because no Ace is gonna be folding either to me. So we're just gonna go ahead and uh, check it down. Oh, there's our Queen. Um, he plays flush draws aggressively, so I'm not really expecting him to have a flush draw here. Gotta make sure to hit the period and not the zero, or not enter. And now we're just gonna check fold. Horrible, horrible, horrible river card for us. There's really not much we can do. I mean, like, what's he calling us on the turn that, like, just doesn't hit on the river? I mean, if we had any kind of a spade draw, we probably would call, any kind of a spade we would call, but, like, I've got a feeling that, like, He's, he's probably calling us on the turn with either like a flush draw or like a queen. And there's not many queens he's turning into a complete bluff here. And even if there are, like, we don't have that many kickers beat, so we're going to fold it. And that, like, overbet on that shove on that ace high flop completely, like, ruined our. Um, ruined the momentum we had in his hand. Completely killed it. Completely killed it. Because he was on the ropes, you know, he rebought for like he rebought like less than full stack. Oh man! Because like the period I used the the hand the uh, the buttons right next to the uh, keypad, and we're gonna be betting twice here with uh, middle pair. Okay, check raises last time with a complete draw, complete error. So we're gonna call it. We're gonna check this behind, and there was our trips. If he bets big, I probably won't probably won't uh, raise it. But since he checks, I think he's got like ace high, or he's got an ace a lot, or no, I guess he's got complete air. So this guy is certainly bad. Maybe we'll get our we'll be able to get our money back here from him. Probably will happen in like three bet pots. Want to maybe three bet him for value. Now, if it was like on that queen board when we didn't have a flush, we probably would have um, chucked the river to him and called him back. Certainly not very good, though. Luckily, that wasn't at like my higher stakes. Make a misclick like that. I'm so used to. Um, I'm not used to. I'm actually not used to using the the period and the fifty cents at all when I make a bet. 
So against this guy who folds a lot of big blinds, we will be raising. Um, this is a good guy to just raise any two cards against on the big on the, on the button. I mean, he also pays off a lot too. So we're going to be going for two streets of value on all middle pairs and probably maybe even like this is a hand we would go for two streets of value on. If he donks out, we we'll probably will raise him and then um, fold if he shoves. Because he's going to be donking out like um, ace 8 10, like ace 10, a lot of his 10s here. So we're going to try and get value from those hands. We do have a good kicker with a 9. He's been very stationy, but like, so if he check raises us here, this, it'd be the first time he ever puts a bet in on the turn, so we're probably going to be uh, behind. Because he wasn't that, he wasn't overly aggressive with the flush draw, he just min raised the flop with it. Check min raised the flop, which is completely different than like check shoving the turn. Which is probably left to like two pair straight kind of hands. We were gonna re-raise ace ten for value, because he likes to recall uh re raises with ace nine. Or I'm sorry, with ace five. And we flop a ten, and we're gonna try and get this in pre-flop, or on the flop here. So we're gonna make this six fifty. If he min raises us, we're just gonna ship it in. Good card for us, good card. Let's make this let's see, in order for us to shove, we need to make it probably not much more than fifteen, right? The ace, you know, is a good card because it gives us two pair. It's a bad card because it loses our action. But, uh, alright. Let's get this bad boy in. If he's got 7 8, then, you know, cooler us. But what are you going to do, right? There we go. Dink. He had ace king. So, um,. I guess I don't mind the way he played that, but it's a bit different, difficult, like different, I guess. And we're going to be getting this one in, too. We're going to be going three streets. If he min raises us, we'll probably just shove it in. Let me rebuys. That's good. So we got our money back. Very happy we got our money back. Although it looks like we missed some value, because, uh, oh, he rebought again. Excellent. Excellent news. Um, he did just fold to our but with the ace high. We're going to see how he reacts here to us on the river. We're going to bet this river, though. There we go. It's kind of like a delayed, delayed C bet. Not betting the turn, not betting the flop, but if he takes to us on the river again, 10 high probably isn't good. Although it might be, it probably isn't. So I'll bet the river, I mean, and if he calls us, then it's like, then he has even more of a reason to call our river bets later, and that's perfectly okay by me. I mean, most of my river bets, when, they, when they're big, they're going to be for, you know, they're going to be good for value. And so when he sees us, like, make a tiny river bet bluff, then he might extrapolate that into thinking that, like, it's going to be a, a big river bet bluff. And uh, he might be folding to our C bets now, so we going to have to adjust to that. He also seems to be raising a lot from the button, but he's also not folding with three bets. So that just means that uh, to get three bet him only for value. Excellent board. This is one of those boards where we're going to bet like three bet this guy again. They're over pair. If he's in check min raise us. Yeah, that's three hands in a row where he's folded to our C bets. We're going to start um, C bet bluffing. It's tough when we keep getting these good hands, though. Yeah, we're going for three streets of value here. We're going to want to take this guy to value town. Oh, uh, now we just split the pot. Um, so I don't think he's going to be folding, but that's a pretty shitty situation. Oh, but he still called us. Nice. What did he have, like King Queen or something? Huge station, yeah. 
and he rebuys again. This guy is perfect. I mean, I bet that river for that reason, because, like, um, I'm actually going to see bit bluff this one, because I'm wanting to see bit bluff this guy. Because, like, the last four times I've seen bet, I either had, like, the nuts or he's folded, so I'm going to continue butting this guy off whatever hand he has. But, like, you know, there I guess there is value to a bet there, but he might even fold, like, ace-x for some reason, too. Um, so there's some value in that. Excuse me. There isn't a cough button. Oh, here's our three streets of value. If he check raises me, I think we're gonna get in because we're only behind to like a couple hands. Oh, there's the boat. Um, we're gonna overshove this river because I feel like he's got king x a lot. Um, especially if he bets out. And we have a boat. So like, if we shove this river, like if we bet eleven, he's probably only gonna call us. He might call us with like a jack. Um, but if we bet like 41 here, $40.50, he's going to call us like any king. And so he does, and he's going to fold every draw, every bluff, every draw. He, has. he might even fold a jack. So let's just go ahead and shove it in. He probably didn't have anything because he insta folded, so. If we don't boat up there, then we probably uh, don't um, shove all in. Alright, we have top pair again. This guy's check min raises have shown to be fairly weak, but we're going to see how he plays the turn. We don't necessarily have the greatest of hands, and he pots it out. Huh. So, before we check raises on a draw, and what draw is out there other than the 5-6, which just so happened to come in, um, we do have top pair but this is the first time he's ever bet really big. We don't have that much invested, so let's not double him up with a marginal situation like this. We'll get him later. If he were to bet less than, like, uh, pot on the turn, I probably would call. Um, there's something about a pot size bet, though, that makes me see like he, wanted, he wants to try and get his stack all in. Well, a couple times we're folding do seven on the button. It's not a good finish situation. Ooh, not a good bluffy board. Um, he's gonna be calling us any diamond. Any non-diamond turn, we could have maybe value better ace high, but no thanks. Um, we're gonna go. Maybe our ace high is good at showdown. It wasn't, but we were not much value in betting that turn either. That's his first re-raise um, that he's made. And min re raise is always very nice, especially when we have such a high implied out hands like, uh, you know, pocket pairs and scooty connectors like this. It makes our hand playing perfectly. And you see that's kind of big. That's fine. I mean, I always love it when I see, like, a guy who never re raises and then, like, makes a min re raise like that and I have a hand like that because it's like, if I have flop two pair, I'm going to stack them. Yeah, this is a good barreling card. I think he's gonna call me with ace high a lot, so like I can actually barrel a lot of turn cards. And if he check min raises me here, I can very easily call with a gut shot, um, and maybe even bluff him off a later street. And again, he pops it again on the turn, huh? Okay, so that's the second time in a row. But see, even you don't see this, but his aggression percentage. Frequency is very low, very low. So I'm going to continue giving him the credit of the doubt. And probably go back to not see betting him for for bluff. This is a good value re-raise with King Ten. Uh, 
Uh, I'm going to go for a small value here on the turn. Very, very thin, because he might call me with ace high, he might call me with a flush draw, and he might call me with a two. Very, very thin. Very thin. One of those where it's like, might be too thin. But I won't know, because he folded. Playing this guy is actually kind of boring, boring, because all we're doing is like waiting for the next like big hand, where we can get three threes of value from this guy. But it also makes this playing this kind of guy kind of not very difficult either, because it's just kind of he's very stationy. We've actually only got about 10 more minutes left in this video. Uh, we might keep going until this guy busts or leaves, or we can maybe leave him and up, up a $100 profit too. This guy is down about 85 bucks. That's a perfect re-rate. It's like the nuts and has that eight queen suited. Um, we're not going to be see betting this. It's one of those boards where if we see bet, we're going to have to like probably fold if he raises. But we can check this thing down, and maybe he'll bluff us off whatever hand that we have. If he bets this king. He could very easily have the king. We might call a decent size bet. Probably won't call it pot size bet. Or, you know, he, I think he was thinking about bluffing it, but he'd have to probably bet pot, and because that would, pot size bet would be very consistent with what he had, and he had ace jack there. So if we get the ace, he stacks. We stack him. Uh, no, 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 no. Let's do this. Um, I'm always wary of like value betting ace high boards. I've said this many times because if it was like a jack high board, the nines would be very easy because like he's also, he's more likely to call us so like a pair other than that. But like when he sees the ace out there, it's kind of like oh well, he's got the ace or he, for whatever reason. But I think we have a good, strong enough second pair there that we can value better two streaks and not value ton ourselves too much. We might do a delayed C bet here. A super, super delayed C bet. Although we're not representing anything on this river for certain when the two pairs. But we don't get to show it down. Jack high might have been good there. Um, if it was king high, I probably would check behind king high. And ace high. Jack high, you're kind of flirting with. You know, he's going to have like queen six or something stupid there a lot. And plus, if he sees me bluff the river, it's just gonna like, um, it's not, it's, yeah, it might cost me like two dollars there, but it, to be honest, it's, it might get me more than two dollars the, at the end of the at the end of the day. This board here, I'll just check down king high, might be good. He had ace high. If I have ace here, I might call him, but like, look at these aggression frequencies, right? Very, very l small bets. Not very, doesn't like to bet very much, if often at all. So I will fold there too many bets. Um, uh, for certain, we'll be bet calling a min raise here. He insta min raises us. That's fine. And we'll be calling a turn pot size bet. Or we could shove it. 
Um, does he call a turn shove here with hands that we beat? And I think the answer is yes. Um, we don't mind the fold either, to be honest, given like how many bad cards are out there. I mean, there's a good chance that he probably might not barrel the river again without a decent hand, which makes it a really tough play. I mean, the jack was the best card for us. The jack is, the jack gave us like top pair in the flush draw. Um, it's an excellent card for us. Uh, let's go for one more street here. We don't have to bet a full five dollars. We can bet four. Maybe he'll call us like ace five or something. He rebought again, didn't he? He's uh, must be out of running out of money on his account. Which, as a poker player, you kind of feel bad about if you completely drain somebody's you know account while he's playing. But maybe, maybe not. We'll see what bluff this guy here, uh, just for this opportunity. We're going to see how he's going to react. Mix it up. You don't always like to play the same. He's gonna show up with probably a seven because I think an ace bets this river. Yep. It's okay to show up every now and again without like a made hand because that's gonna give him like reaffirmations that like you know I'm bluffing him. It's gonna continue him calling me down. So that's why I will mix it up. I wanted to make him think that I'm always bluffing him. spots like that. Oh, okay, that's what that number is. That is... This 20% here is his fold to 3 bet percentage. Um, that means he's only folding 1 out of 5 times. And we're not going to be betting that. Um, we'll bet this turn. Again, like, same situ uh, we've talked about the situation a lot. Like, top middle pair, no kicker, can't really get too much value. Uh, let's go first. We can actually get some value here on the river. He might call us with an eight. We split every other nine, and if he has an ace, we're gonna call us anyway. So, if he has a two, he's probably gonna raise us, and that's fine. Yeah, we split the nine. Whereas on the flop, he still calls with the nine, but he's ahead of us on the flop. So we can get some thin value there on that river. Whereas if we had a hand like King-9, King-9 is m much more profitable to bet the flop for value than like uh, any other kind of a hand, than, than like 9-6. Here we are calling Sukhan out of position again, I mean, heads up, it, it's, a, it's a pretty decent spot um, against somebody who's raising quite a bit. Let's go ahead and try and bluff 8 high on the river. Again, I have no problem with him looking me up one of these times. Um, so it looks like he slow played the ace all the way to the river. He probably bought it up with like ace three. Or he had like ace two or ace six or something like that. And he raised it on the flush. I think it's going to be time though for us to be ending this video because we're running out of time. There's not really much we can do. I could be playing this guy for another hour. I know you guys would like to see that, but we've already gone two parts in this video, and I had not known that uh, this guy was going to come along. But hopefully, these, this two-part video has shown you guys a little bit more about Heads Up. 
Um, I'm talking a little bit about, you know, the rake is extremely high here at these stakes. You don't get real good rake back. So maybe if you want to play, uh, you know, tilt or absolute, try it out there. If you have rake back there, it's a much better situation than, you know, maybe playing at stars, heads up. I'll check behind this this king high here and uh, probably going to be ahead if he checks to me. But we're going to go ahead and play a couple more hands. I actually know. Let's go ahead and stop the. Uh, let's go ahead and stop the video and. Um, I'm, I'm going to bring up the stats right now. So I will be right back, guys. Okay, guys. Hopefully you guys can see this. Um, I put in about 340 hands. I made 200 bucks, which is a pretty damn good day. I was running about 63.58 with a 9% three bet, which is pretty low, um, and I only made 37 VPPs. So I was got like uh, 0.11 VPPs per hand, which is a very very small rate back percentage. Um, those are my stats. I think uh, I don't know if you can see those VPPs hands or not. Um, but I feel like I did pretty pretty well. I think I played very well, and I think um, we got a couple of tough spots there. Um, and even though I overbet shoved that river or that flop with like queen high against that donk, I was able to get my money back. Um, so that was a big uh, a big misclick, and I wasn't able to I wasn't tilting. I got all my money back and more. So, all right, guys, this has been Code Red Rules. Hope you guys have enjoyed the uh, heads up tables. And see you guys next time. Good luck at the tables.